You know, ladies and gentlemen, William Shatner is a lot of things. A great actor, an egotist, probably one of the most self-aware actors of all time. And he's passing, I think, 73 years in the industry because he just turned, uh, he will be turning 93 very soon. But where did he get his start? Well, he's a fellow Canadian, and like me, he's a fellow Jew. Now, William Shatter, born on March 22, 1931, in NDG, or Notre Dame de Grasse, neighborhood of Montreal, to a conservative Jewish household. His parents were Anne Nia Gamaresi and Joseph Shatter, a clothing manufacturer. He's the middle and only son of three children. His older sister was Joy Rutenberg, who passed away in 2023, and the younger sister is Farla Cohen. Born in 1940. His uh, per, per, partenial family name was Shatner, S-C-H-A-T-T-N-E-R. It was his grandfather, Wolf Shatner, who anglicized the spelling. All four Shatner's grandparents were Jewish immigrants. They came from settlements in Ukraine and Lithuania, which were then under rule of Austria-Hungary and, of course, the Russian Empire. Now, Shatner attended two schools in Notre Dame de Gras, uh, Wilding, Willingdon Elementary School and Wetzel High School and as alumnus of the Montreal Children's Theatre. He did study economics at McGill University Faculty of Management in Montreal, where he graduated a Bachelor of Commerce degree in 1952. In 2011, McGill awarded him an honorary doctorate of letters. He was granted the same accolade by the New England Institute of Technology in May 2018. Now, he has said in published reports he kind of used his economic training to deal with understanding the business better than most actors, and I tend to agree. Now, his movie career began when he was still at college. In 51, he had a small role in the Canadian comedy drama, The Butlers Died Off. Its credits list him as Bill Shatter, and he described his role simply as a crook. After graduating, he worked as an AM and actor at both the Mountain Playhouse in Montreal and the Canadian National Repertory Theatre in Ottawa before joining the Stratford Shakespeare Festival in Ontario. His roles at the festival included a part of Marlowe's Tambour La Lorraine, in which he made his Broadway debut in '56. His brief appearance in the opening scene of a high-profile production of Sophocles' Opadius Rex by Tyron Guthrie introduced him to television viewers across the whole of Canada. In Henry V, he combined playing the minor role of the Duke of Gloucester with understudying Christopher Plumber as the king. When a kidney stone obliged Plumber to withdraw from a performance, Shatter's decision to present a distinctive interpretation of his role rather than imitating his seniors impressed the uh, plumber as a striking uh, uh, manifestation of initiative and potential. So he went he went on a star because of Plummer's kidney stone. Now Plummer and Shatter again later appeared as Klingon adversary of Captain Kirk's in Star Trek VI, The Undiscovered Country, which I've talked about in a previous podcast. Guthrie, too, rated the young uh, Shatner very highly, later uh, recalling him uh, as the most promising actor that his festival employed. And for a time, he was seen as a potential peer of Steve McQueen, Paul Newman, and Robert Redford. In a rule of view of Pat Jordan, author of the in-depth profile of Shatner for New York Times, his subsequent failure to achieve the acclaim accorded to his starrier contemporaries were attributable to his professional philosophy of work equals work and his consummate participation in many forgettable projects that probably did his career more harm than good, hurt him uh, 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 in quite many levels. On the eye of his momentum's casting of James Kirk, he was, in Jordan's opinion, seen merely as an actor who showed up on time, knew his lines, worked cheap, and always answered his phone. Sounds like a CBC uh, or Canadian actor. That's what we do. Canadians take the job. In 54, he decided to leave Stratford and move to New York City in the hopes of building a career on the Broadway stage. He was soon offered a chance to make his first appearance on American TV, but not what he expected. It was a children's program called The Howdy Doody Show as he created the role of Ranger Bob, co-starring with a cast of puppets and Clarabelle the Clown, whose dialogue with Shatner consists entirely of honks and a bicycle horn. It was four years before he won his first real role in a major Hollywood movie, appearing in the MGM film The Brothers Karamazov as Alexei, the youngest of the brothers. In a cast that included Yul Brenner, he stood out for his direct approach to the role. Now, in December 58, directed by Kirk Browning, he appeared opposite Ralph Bellamy as a Roman tax collector in Bethlehem on the day of Jesus' birth in a Hallmark Hall of Fame live television production 
entitled The Christmas Tree. The cast list, which included the great Jessica Tandy, Margaret Hamilton, Bernadette Peters, Richard Thomas, uh, Cyril Richard, and Carol Channing. His U.S. television profile was heightened soon after when he had a leading role, role in the episode of the third season of Alfred Hitchcock Presents called The Glass Eye. Now, in 1959, Shatner received good reviews on the role of Lomax in a world of Susie Wong on Broadway, and you can see some of the, the, the original tape uh, on YouTube, and it uh, co-starred his future Star Trek uh, Lady Ingenue, French de Wynne. Now, in March of that year, while still performing that production, he also played Archie Goodwin in what would have been television's first Neuro World Wolf series had it the pilot not been aborted by CBS after it was shot and a few episodes were put in the can. Now, his big break, of course, came in this. He appeared in two episodes of Twilight Zone, Nick of Time, considered a minor classic, and, of course, Nightmare at 20,000 Feet, uh, about a... Uh, uh, a monster on the wing. He was a, he's a psychologically disturbed traveler who sees the gremlin and totally freaks out. Now, uh, when the anthology film The Twilight Zone, the movie was produced some 20 years later, it was, was with a remake of the latter episode that the movie climaxed. He also appeared twice as Wayne Gorman in NBC's Outlaws, 1960, a Western series with Barton McLean and then returned to Alfred Hitchcock Presents for a fifth-season episode, the New York classic May, Mother May I Go Out to Swim. In 61, co-starring with Julie Harris, he appeared on Broadway in A Shot in the Dark, directed by Harold Klurman. Gene Sachs and Walter Matthau also took part in the play. Matthau won a Tony Award for his performance, and then Shatner was featured in two episodes of the underrated NBC TV series thriller, The Grim Reaper and a Hungry Glass, and the film The Explosive Generation. He also took the lead role in Roger Corman's movie, The Intruder, which Stanley Kaufman of the New York Republic described as Shatner's first interesting performance. He also had a, a strong supporting role in the Stanley Kramer film, Judgment of Newberg, uh, playing a lawyer. Now, in the 63-64 season, he appeared in the episode of the ABC series, Channing. He was also uh, that year in uh, a family theater production called The Soldier, and received credits on other programs of the Psalm series. That same year, he guest starred in Route 66 in the episode Build Your Houses with Their Backs to the Sea. Now, 64 was another big year. He guest starred in the second episode of the second season of the ABC uh, science fiction anthology series The Outer Limits, the, the classic Cold Hands Warm Heart. Also that year, he appeared in the episode of a reporter and playing a supporting role in the Western film The Outrage which was a remake of Akira Kurosawa's Rashomon, starring Paul Newman, Lawrence Harvey, Claire Bloom, and Edward G. Robinson. Now, he was also in the Man from Uncle, Uncle episode that, fill, that featured future co-star Leonard, Leonard Neboy. Now, uh, the big bomb, of course, w that came that year as the titular character Alexander in the pilot for a proposed series called Alexander the Great, along Adam, we uh, Adam West as Cleander. The series was not picked up, and the pilot remained on air until 68, when it was repackaged as a TV movie to capitalize on the fame that Wes and Shatner had won in the interim. Wes is Batman, Shatner is Kirk. Shatner hoped the series would be a major success, but Wes was apparently unsurprised by his failure to proceed, later castigating to the pilot for one of the worst scripts I ever read and recalling it as one of the worst things I've ever done. Now in 65, Shatner guest starred in 12 O'Clock High as Major Kurt Brown in the episode I Am the Enemy. In the same year, he had his lead role in the legal drama uh, For the People, starring assistant DA married to a woman played by Jessica Walter. Ironically, it was only the show's cancellation after his 13-episode first season that allowed him to walk under the bridge of the Enterprise the following year. Now, Shatler eventually starred in his 66 gothic horror film Incubus, which was filmed to Esperanto, the second again feature-led movie ever made with uh, that dialogue. Now, <laughs> Jason Alexander in the roles of, uh, of Shatner on the Comedy Network. So he said, biggest, rottenest, uh, crappest. Now, he uh, he also starred in a key episode of Gunsmoke in 66 as the character Fred Bateman. He also appeared in the as an attorney turned counterfeiter, Brett Schuyler, in a 66 episode of The Big Valley. And in 68, he starred the little known spaghetti western white Comanche, Played both a white hat character and a black hat evil twin. 
Johnny Moon, a virtuous half Comanche gunslinger, and Nota, a bloodthirsty warlord. So he was ready for Star Trek in many ways because he was taking these extremely, extremely, extremely uh, strange roles. But Shatner uh, is the type of person he's always keeping busy. And, uh, you know, it's, it's ironic how it goes now. Uh, the, uh, the Stratford influence was strong in him uh, quite a bit. Now, ironically, ladies and gentlemen, uh, he got away from movies for about three years when he was on Star Trek, like I said. He, uh, and he also did uh, an episode of the, the Naked City, The Nurses, uh, Burke's Law. He Actually, I forgot about it. He was on The Fugitive, 40 People as well, Virginian, and Dr. Kildare. So, uh, and then after he went off, he did everything from the Medical Center, Soul Survivor, the FBI, very underrated in the Anderson trial. He played, uh, uh, he was on Ironside. Uh, y five O six cents, and uh, you know he even after c coming off Star Trek, he was always working. I would figure, ladies and gentlemen, he is the hardest working actor since uh, the nineteen fifties because all these Canadian productions he would have been in, he felt there was a better option for him to go stage into uh, U.S. television. He saw the benefits of what was going on in the states, and he was part of that Western, you know, uh, when. I think television had 17 westerns at one point, so he rode he rode that literally as uh, best as he could. But Shatner, like I said, being from Montreal and usually people from Quebec and Acadie were were very outgoing style people. I think it was worked to his benefit. I'm not judging him on his personality. I'm not judging him on his life choices because you come from from conservative Jewish Montreal and you're the one of the most recognized people on the planet. The odds are that they're very heavy, that you have to work hard, you do it. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, like I said, he's a, to me, he's a genius, and uh, geniuses always rise to the top. So that's the early career of William Shatner. We're not going to go too much to Star Trek, because you can talk, you know, 50 years about it. If you like what you're doing here, what our various uh, TV podcasts about the vintage years of the 50s and 60s, let us know with a like, comment, subscribe, or share. And if this is the first time you're finding out that he's an Anglophone Canadian Jew, a conservative Jew, you know, well, welcome to the multiculturalism of this channel. Thanks for listening. Bye.